us continue wave optics part 9 last time we have seen the diffraction through a single slit slit a is reduced a little bit we get the light like this and still smaller when lambda is much greater than a then the bending is still more so here the plane wave front does not bend if a is large if it is little small then visibly it bends and if it is very small then it acts as a point source of light there are two classes of diffraction the fresnel's diffraction diffraction observed when the source of light lies at a finite distance from the slit the screen is also at a finite distance Fraunhofer diffraction diffraction takes place at a slit when a plane wave front is incident on it and the wavelength emerging from the slit is also plane so both the source and the screen should be at infinite distance from the narrow slit in laboratory convex lens is used to get plane wave front such a thing is often seen let us go from here to the lab and get the plane wave fronts in front of our diffraction we have a cis lens two lenses are used here and a screen source s is at the focus of the first lens and that gives out plane wave fronts which passes through the second lens but what happens is rather than this entering the lens and emerging out at focus what happens is these rays also bend and you have p not and p now where does this p come from it is due to this diffraction of light f is almost equal to d since d is much greater than a so s is the monochromatic source of light of wavelength lambda placed at the principal focus of the lens y y dash ab is a narrow slit of it a the wavelets diffracted in the direction inclined at an angle theta with normal to the slit they are brought to focus by lens mn at point p now let us see a bright image is expected at the center of the screen but we saw we get a diffraction pattern that is a central maximum at the center or flanked by a number of dark and bright fringes call the secondary maxima and minima on either side of o so according to huygens principle when light falls on the slit it becomes a source of secondary wavelets if the aperture is small a portion of light is bent passing through the aperture ab is diffracted in all directions as we have seen earlier now let us draw the ray diagram we have the lens the rays of light enter from the source and this is the distance a of the width slit width so this will be a by 2 this will be a by 2 again what is expected from this ab this is the center o there is a ray which comes out it bends this is not the normal path but it diffracts and it comes to p let us draw a perpendicular ac now this bc will be the path length this angle is theta here theta all these angles are theta the wavelets from a and b will have a path difference of bc if a n is normal to the diffracted beam then in right angle triangle acb we have bc is equal to ab sin theta so so bc is a sin theta if the optical path difference bc is lambda theta 1 is theta 
a b is equal to a then what we have is lambda is equal to a sin theta such a point p is the position of the first secondary minima if o is the midpoint of ab then the optical path difference between the wavelets from a and o reaching the point p1 is lambda by 2 similarly path difference of the wavelets arriving at p0 is lambda by 2 hence the wavelets arriving at p from parts ao ob of a plane wave fronts are out of phase therefore the point p is of minimum intensity that is we have destructive interference now let's see minima the equations a sin theta 1 is lambda we have seen first minima at point p the next minimum occurs at the point when a sin theta 3 is 2 lambda in general for the nth minimum a sin theta n is equal to n lambda same can be applied to the other side of p not therefore a sin theta n is equal to plus minus n lambda n is equal to plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 now let's see maximum if q is another point on the screen such that pc is 3 lambda by 2 and the angle theta is theta 2 then 3 lambda by 2 is equal to a sin theta 2 a sin theta 2 is 3 lambda by 2 This point will be the position of the first maximum. The next maximum occurs at theta two, a q two, sorry, a sine theta four is phi lambda by two. In general, for the nth maximum, a sine theta n is equal to a n plus half lambda. A sine theta n is equal to plus minus n plus half lambda, where n is equal to plus minus one plus minus two plus minus three, and so on. Now let us see. the waveform for a diffraction pattern so that's the intensity versus sin theta graph this is the first minimum on both the sides and the first maximum on either side now these are the theta 1s and theta 2s minimum is a sin theta n is equal to plus minus n n is equal to plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 and so on for maxima a sin theta n is equal to plus minus n plus half lambda n is equal to plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 and so on distances of minima and maxima from the central bright point so from the central bright point we know capital d is equal much greater than a theta is very small So sine theta can be written as tan theta. Theta is y by d. If y and d and y and b are the distances of the nth dark band or the minima and the bright or the maxima band from the central bright band, then theta is y n upon d that is equal to n lambda by a. So y n d is equal to n lambda capital D upon a. So y and d is equal to n w. Theta is equal to y and b upon capital D. That is n plus half lambda by a. So y and b is equal to n plus half lambda d by a. So y and b is n plus half w. W is equal to lambda d by a. E. Similar to fringe width in interference, except the central band and the reducing intensity on both the sides. width of the central bright fringe so let's see how to measure the width of the central fringe width of the central fringe is nothing but the distance between the centers of the first dark fringe on either sides so we have width of the central bright fringe wc is equal to 2y 1d that is 2w that is 2 lambda d upon a this is the diffraction pattern for a single slit pattern now if the slit is single then this is the diffraction pattern but now if there are two slits then two will have diffraction pattern but there will be interference too this is what we are going to talk next time thank you